Rather Fox, Jacob here. Today we're going to be doing a nice little overview of the Crusader Industries Mercury Star Runner. Of course, everyone's been waiting for this ship. This is quite the ship, and those that have it are for sure glad that they do. Hell, even friends of friends of aunts and uncles probably are, honestly. This is how highly rated this ship is. Maybe slightly exaggerated, but anyway. As always, do see the chapters for whatever you are interested in. I do ramble. So this may not be entirely accurate, and as always, will contain my opinion and speculation. Let's not forget to sub up to keep up with the content. This is a ship of which you can't typically get your hands on, however the easiest way to get your hands on this is of course via the Scoundrel Concierge Pack. Yes, sure, you need to be a concierge to be able to purchase the pack, that's all well and good, or you can get it off the grey market. Or, in other words, you can just, well, wait till November for the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, something or other like that in November. Anyway, the Mercury Star Runner. Well, actually, I'm going to call it the MSR for now because it takes too bloody long to say. But anyway, the MSR will be the first entry into the verse from Crusader Industries. The MSR is a fast, stealthy hauler, or basically just a blockade runner. This will be the best in class in this category. As far as size is concerned, in my opinion, I'm sure that opinion is mutual for most. Looking through the interior images, it is indeed a sight to behold, especially so the server slash data area. It gives a nice vibe of there's important shit here. Given how it's in the centre of the room, after you get into the ship, you go into the hallway, you just see this great big massive like data centre kind of area in a ship. It's quite the sight to behold, in my opinion. The maximum crew the MSR can have includes a pilot, co-pilot, two turreters, we'll call it, and a scanny person thingamabob doodah. With that in mind, the ship only has three beds for the possible max five crew, so you'll want to be careful how much crew you bring with you, obviously. Bearing in mind there are no docking ports on here and the only exit out of the ship is through the ramp at present. We'll touch on that a little bit more later on. So if you want to get out of the ship and, like, I know, those extra two people that can't sleep anyway and want to get out and sleep on another ship, you're going to end up killing your turrets or anyone in the cargo bay. So you've got to be careful. Moving on, let's not forget the general appearance of this ship. It does definitely look cool. You can't argue with that. Most people dig the whole asymmetrical thing that this ship has going on. And I like how it's only marginally asymmetrical rather than something more extreme something like say the corsair for example that is like quite extreme that's just like balanced it's like literally just gonna fall inside but anyway i dig that ship anyway so whatever i dig all the ships i feel like the ship would have a different vibe honestly if it looked different i just i almost if it wasn't asymmetrical i just wouldn't like it as much but then again the concept and the mechanics behind the ship are unique so maybe not but who knows one of my favourite aspects of the ship has to be the full glass front. The real estate in this regard will make this like a breeze to fly, not to mention the general high speed the ship will be able to achieve. We can only hope, of course, that it being asymmetrical won't compromise its manoeuvrability. Moving on to components, the MSR features a medium radar, five medium computers, two medium power plants, coolers, shield generators, fuel intakes and fuel tanks, a single medium quantum drive and jump drive, and finally two medium fuel tanks. I do like this loadout. It virtually has two of everything, which is cool. Kind of gives that sense of like, it's reliable, it's going to have decent longevity, and of course you get that sense that it's going to be able to like protect itself and like keep pushing forward. That's the kind of vibe, that's what I kind of feel with, uh, with the amount of components it has, but mm, whatever. The thrusters are fairly standard with VTOL, main and retro thrusters. We actually have no images of the underneath of the MSR. So having looked at the hollow viewer, you can see what would seem to be quite small VTOL thrusters. But then again, these could quite easily be fixed maneuvering thrusters. So perhaps it doesn't have VTOL, who knows? I don't see this as a game break if it doesn't have VTOL, but whatever. Maybe there's some uh, concept images that I'll find that shows it has VTOL, but whatever, we'll see. Perhaps given that the ship is asymmetrical, could well be why it doesn't appear to have VTOL as a theory. Yeah, apparently it does. Of course, we'll find out in the coming months or weeks. Moving on to weapons, as before there are two turrets, both of these are in the cargo bay, one above, the other below. 
These turrets seem to be size 2 laser repeaters with 2 per mount. The missile loadout is 2 racks of size 2 missiles with 2 per rack. Of course, for a total of 4 missiles, all of which being size 2 of course. Up front the pilot has size 2 gimbaled laser repeaters, 1 per mount with a total of 2 mounts. These of course would mean a maximum of size 3 fixed laser repeaters, which is all well and good. All in all, a decent loadout all things considered, with the ability to fend off a good couple of fighters when fully crewed. What I find rather odd is looking from this image, the ship would seem to be quite tall, given that you can apparently access the lower and upper turret from the cargo room relative to the height of the individuals in the image. Of course, this will be cleared up in time, and then, then again, these are just concept images, so the actual size of the ship might not be scaled quite how it actually would end up being. I don't know what I think of that. There may even be two flaws on this thing for all I know. I mean, it looks like there would be, so whatever. Looking at the floor pan of the MSR, this pretty much covers the entirety of the center of the ship as expected. The floor plan is fairly normal and efficient, so of course the biggest room towards the back houses the 96 SCU of cargo and the two turrets as discussed before. After that we enter the hallway come data encryption, come data storage area thing. On the right coming from the cargo hold you have the scanner room thing where scanny person and thingamabob scans stuff and things. On the opposite side of the ship you have what I suspect to be the component area. Moving towards the front of the ship you of course have the bridge. To the left of that you have the habitation. In here of course there's three beds as I mentioned before and on the opposite side you have the lounge area whereas of course as discussed before you get into the smuggler tunnel things. However there are a couple of things I don't like. One being the box room before the bridge. To me there is no need for the amount of doors that are in this area. In my opinion, get rid of the door into the bridge or get rid of the door into the data area. On the other hand though, these additional doors could be seen as a defendable positions perhaps uh, in the event of being boarded, which would make sense. Lastly, I'd like to see a regular lift into the ship rather than the rear ramp. There is of course room for the lift between the scanner room and towards the cargo bay in that small gap there towards the uh, main hallway, or the data room as it were. In summary, I like this ship. I mean, honestly, who wouldn't? The concept was pretty well on point. It looks good. It doesn't seem to be changed in much ways from what we know, but of course we'll find out. Evidently, there is a lot to making this ship a reality. Looking at the large 114 tasks it's taken to produce this ship. Of course, that'll be subject to change. It is still unclear exactly how most of this ship is going to work, aside from the whole data running mechanics. I'm looking more at the ventilation system hidden area thing, which is apparently going to be accessed via the coffee table in the lounge area. This coffee table will lead to what's called the shielded subfloor storage, where being stopped by the 5-0 wouldn't be as much of a concern, as long as you put your contraband in the correct location. That in itself raises a question to me, in exactly how do you define where cargo goes once purchased? I mean, you purchase cargo, it goes into the cargo, but if you purchase cargo, it can you define whether it goes to the regular cargo at the back or can you define if it goes into the shielded sections? And given that the MSR is taking as long as it is, this may well be why we will soon be able to move our drinks from our backpack to our leg storage to our chest storage so that in turn we can move items in our MSRs. This in itself is just a theory but it adds up from the limited knowledge that I've gathered. Or perhaps when physicalized cargo comes around we'll be able to define where cargo goes where in the MSR upon purchased. All in all, the Mercury Star Runner is definitely up there with this year's top three ships, obviously alongside the likes of the Asperia Prowler, and well, heaven knows what else at this point. All subject to individual opinions of course. Obviously a large number of people don't have the MSR, those that don't can definitely rejoice in finally seeing it in the verse in the next month or two. All you MSR owners will have your org friends queuing from the ramp, all the way to the opposing struts at Port Olazar, for sure. So that's the conclusion to the Mercury Star Runner. So what's next in line you might ask? I was hoping this video was going to be regarding the RTX 3080 performance in comparison to a 1080 Ti that I currently possess. 
However, that evidently had to be delayed given that you're watching a different video. Oh god, I kind of just realised that sounded like CIG. But anyway, the RTX 3080 video will have to come another time, perhaps sometime in the next several weeks, all as a result of what's been revealed in recent days regarding the quality of certain 3080s. This should hopefully bring 4K content to the channel once I acquire it. I made some other future investments for the channel and for other projects, all of which will be revealed in time, and I honestly think this, amongst other things, will just set this apart. So I know you lot are sceptical about my channel given that I only have this amount of subscribers, but you've made it this far so you're clearly interested, and this is how many of you actually subscribed. So do me a huge favour and subscribe. Do it. Do it. Do it. Also giveaways at 250, 500, 750 and 1000 subs, so long as you've commented on videos. Thank you ever so much for watching. Today's video sponsor is the like button for the glorious YouTube algorithm. That will of course allow this channel to grow with your support. Obviously don't forget to comment or subscribe if you haven't already. If you aren't aware, I generally upload three to five times a week, so be sure to check back. My name is Jacob. Thank you and goodbye for now.